Hi friends, Mindy here. I have a process video for you today. I'm going to be working on day four of On the Brink from By the Wolf or God. And I am starting off with creating my background here. Again, this is going to be one of those pages that I split into two and it will actually go for two days in my journal that I'm creating. And I'm starting off with some By the Wolf or God paper here. And I'm just going to tear some of these and collage them onto this Bristol vellum paper that I'm using. So I am actually using collage medium today from Tim Holtz instead of using my normal matte medium just because um, it's a little bit thicker and this paper is really quite thick and it also dries super fast. So um, this collage medium works really well for that just to make sure everything's going to stay um, stuck down. Now you don't necessarily need to watch me um, glue down all of these pieces of paper, but I am just going to randomly glue um, these different patterns. I have pulled out a few different pages from the kit that I want to use. And then I'm also going to be using some leftover um, vintage book paper, like the edges of it, not the actual text, but you know, like if you trim it down, that kind of open space and um, just randomly doing this on here. I have an idea for how I want to work through um, day four. So I'm trying to keep that in mind as I'm as I'm working here and through the magic of editing, you can see where we've ended up. So I know this looks like a hot mess right at the moment. And that's that's fine. Uh, it's kind of just the process of um, of mixed media. And one of the things I actually love about it is just kind of you get kind of lost in the process and just, you know, layering and doing all of the things. And so um, what you see me doing here, I have some Neocolor 2s. These are water soluble um, crayons. And I am just scribbling down a couple different colors randomly around here. Um, just a couple. Uh, one is Carmine. I can't remember the other name of uh, pink, I think, or um, anyway. Um, and so what I'm going to do is actually use some gesso. This is straight gesso and I am going to use that to activate these neo colors. Now, of course you could do this with, with water, but I'm wanting to, first of all, I want to lighten the color a little bit and I also want to make it, um, it's going to help make it permanent, but it's also going to help kind of blend everything together. So you can see I'm going around, I am um, activating all of that pigment, and then I'm actually going up on to the papers as well. That's why it was um, kind of important for me to have those rough torn edges. It just makes things easier to blend. I'm going right up over these book pages as well, just blending everything in. I was trying not to use my fingers um, on camera, but it's I just can't help myself. It's just what I do. It's how I work through this. So I'm just going to go through, go around, add some color, um, and then where I feel like I need to, more color, I'll just scribble some more color in there and add some more gesso and just kind of keep working back and forth until I get sort of the look that I am after. Just working on my little drop um, mat here again. I just going in with my fingers. I start just kind of working intuitively and I end up with using my fingers. I don't, I don't know why I do that when I'm doing mixed media, but, um, I just really like finger painting apparently. I don't know. It just brings me back, I guess. But anyway, it's just, it's fun to get inky anyway. Um, so you'll see there's a couple areas here where I wanted to add just a little bit more, um, a little bit more white. And then I'm going to actually come in with some other colors as well. I'm going to get, um, I have a color that's called russet, but it's almost like a kind of a, an orangey color and just to try to bring in some of those orange um, hues that are in these papers and then I will also come in with some brown as well so while you watch me do that I'm going to talk a little bit about day four day four is called um, closed until further notice and this is talking about um, she kind of paints a picture Judy does about um, you know, what if you all just kind of showed up for church and the sign on the front door said closed until further notice. And, um, so that's kind of the premise behind this day. I'm going to get back to this part really quick. Um, just cutting this down now, trimming it down. This is going to be my page for today. I'm going to fold this in half and I'm going to use my bone folder here because this, um, this bristle paper is pretty thick anyway. And then I added the, you know, the thick by the Wolf of God paper over the top of that. So I'm just using that to get a nice uh, fold in my paper. And then I'm going to open that back up. And now I'm going to add just a little bit more color here as well. I'm going to go back in and blend this around. This is that kind of darker, um, 
brown color and I wish I could remember the name of it right off. I, th I think it's Van Dyke Brown, honestly, but I can't remember quite exactly right off the top of my head. So going back in with some more of that gesso on the back, just kind of toning down some areas and um, kind of pushing them into the background a little bit more and leaving sort of this cluster of papers here that I have on the right side. And that's where my focal image is going to be. And what I'm going to end up doing is taking a Stabilo, um water soluble graphite pencil here and I'm going to draw a little wonky heart. So one of the things that um, this day is talking about is giving God the honor that is due his name. And it was part of the problem that that was talked about in Malachi. They were kind of just going through the motions and it was, you know, really upsetting to the Lord. And so when I was reading through this, the, my, my brain kind of went in a couple of different areas. Um, and so really quickly, what I'm doing here is just, I'm adding some gesso around the outside of the heart, like the negative space, um, with some other neo color. Again, that's that brown color. And I'm just blending that out to really bring that heart out um into the the foreground so um you can i'm just gonna go around that with several layers of of paint just kind of blending things around here i'm trying to balance um the process here with a little bit of what i wanted to say about the study so um anyway you can see me going around and i'm gonna actually get into where that graphite pencil is and i want to kind of start creating the shading for kind of behind my heart. So I'm activating that um, Stabilo pencil with this gesso as well. And then I will come in and add some neo colors and some different things as well. Um, but anyway, getting back to the actual study. So it's really talking about, you know, giving him honor. And of course, you know, we, we know that he's worthy always and in every situation. And, um, you know, part of their, our, our sacrifice is, is worship to God. And, um, you know, we're told in Psalm 66, one and two, this is not in the devotional. This is just some of my own personal study, um, that we should make a joyful noise unto God and sing forth the honor of his name and make his praise glorious. So that is what he really wants from us with what he really obviously deserves from us. And, um, but one of the things that she, uh, lists in here is, a, um, some information by Warren Wearsby, who does some really good commentaries if you're ever interested, but, um, there are three ways in which God's name can be dishonored. And that is through questioning his love, doing his work carelessly and offering him less than our best. And so what that led me down is kind of a line of what just the words that kind of kept came coming to me were apathy and complacency. And it can be really easy to kind of fall into that. And so you kind of get lulled to sleep. And um, it's really a dangerous place to be. In Revelation 3, is when um, he's talking to the church in Laodicea, he is saying, you know, that you are neither hot nor cold. And I wish that you were either hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. And so, um, it's actually better to be one way or the other, as, as weird as that sounds. Um, obviously we should be on fire for the Lord, but, um, he really wants us to not be complacent and to not, and just go through the motions of, of church and serving him just to, even in our Bible reading, it's not something you just want to do, um, you know, check off a, a to-do list. It's, uh, it needs to be more than that. It really needs to get into our heart and come from an overflow of worship. And so that's kind of where I was thinking of when I was making this heart the focal point for this day. And um, there, another thing that was coming to mind was just that idea of being lulled to sleep. And um, in Romans 13 and 11 and 12, it talks about um, that the time, it's high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. And so it really just tells us how we need to be living. And we we don't have time really to, and especially as this world gets darker, to kind of be messing around. We really need to, you know, make sure that we're we're focused. And I understand that this day was really talking about giving God his due. But part of that comes from our act of worship in the way that we live our life. That is 
an act of worship by doing what he designed us to do, what he created us for in the fellowship with him and in serving one another and all of those kinds of things. So, um, I also wrote on my notes that apathy and complacency are dangerous. They lull you to sleep and leave you exposed to the enemy. And so um, those are kind of just the ways that I, I work through these devotionals. I know I've, I've kind of talked about that in a few different videos here. But, um, you know, sometimes these devotionals, they kind of lean you or spur you on a line of thought. And I would just encourage you, if that happens, like just go down that road and just start seeing what the Lord is trying to see speak to you um, from these days and, um, you know, really make them personal to you. So um, back to the process here, you've seen me just kind of adding in some color. Now I have gone back in with a little bit of gesso and some more neo color and um, blended that out. I went around that edge of that heart with a... Um, Posca paint pen and now I'm coming back in with I went around it again and I'm going to go through here with some water and really activate that um, graphite pencil and what I'm doing is I'm trying to make sure that the tip of my paintbrush here that has the water on it is against the graphite and that's going to kind of help it sort of bleed out and get and sort of fade out to gray in the outer parts of it um because especially because i'm working on a gessoed surface or you know painty surface and so that stabilo likes to kind of run around so i'm trying to really keep that dark outline of the heart and then have it kind of fade out into the background you'll see i'm just going to smudge some of that around with my finger i don't want a harsh edge and i really tried to kind of add some dimension inside the heart with a little bit more color on the the left and then and kind of pushing the color toward the center. Uh, you do have a little bit of time to do that when you're working over a, an already painted surface, especially when you have uh, some matte medium and stuff involved. So I'm um, just going to go around and sort of touch up some areas. I did splatter some black paint on there as well in the background. And now I'm coming in with another one of the stamp sets from uh, by the Well for God, these were the little hearts. And I'm just stamping this randomly, really rough in a few different places, just to bring in a little bit more of that black around there. And then I'm gonna take that same Stabilo pencil and I'm gonna go around the edge of this whole entire page and I'm going to activate that with my water brush here. And again, just trying to give this a nice border and keeping it so that the most of the color is on the edge and fading toward the inner part of the page, if that makes sense. Um, and so you can just kind of push it around the page. So this is kind of what it looks like. You can still see all of those papers underneath. I know it's kind of hard to see on camera, but all of those layers are still there um, and it just adds some, some interest. And then I decided just for a little bit of contrast, I wanted to come back in with my white pen this is a Yoon Ball Signo um, and it's my favorite white pen next to a Posca probably and I'm just gonna make some little scribbly marks around my heart here and a few little scribbly lines around some of that stamping as well just to bring in a little bit um, just a little bit of white as as well I just like the contrast of having the white and the black on there so Moving now toward the inside pages, you can see I've moved my drop paper here. Um, and on the inside, surprisingly, there's not a whole lot of paint, which is shocking. But um, what I'm going to do is actually, this is the backer that came in one of the items from the devotional kit. And I'm actually going to make some pockets out of it. So you can see I'm just, I cut it down, cut the white parts off, and then I cut those corners out. Um, just to make some tuck spots and now I'm going to stamp the number four with the big idea outline and then the script inside with some kitsch flamingo that's in um, an archival ink not a distress um, and then here's where I took those notes um, from the devotional and I thought I was going to just leave this as and use this kind of as the pocket um, but in the end, I decided to just go ahead and tuck it in those pockets that I had already created. I'm just going to kind of go back and forth and try to decide. I didn't want to cover up my number four, so I'm going to make this pocket just a little bit smaller on the left side here. And this is going to hold some of those flashcards and some of my additional notes and scripture references. And then over here on the right, I'll put that um, other pocket, but I'm going to use the full size of that. 
and then that's just one of the journaling cards from the kit and I'm going to put that in there but before I do glue those down I want to add some just a little bit of color into the background um, not a lot that I'm going to do here I really um, this is the multimedia marks stamp that I'm using with the archival ink in Kitsch Flamingo but I just wanted a little bit in the background um, I'm spending most of the time working on those outside and so between that and the notes I don't want to kind of reinvent the wheel for the inside so I'm basically just kind of creating pockets to hold my my notes just you know like I would normally do in my journals and then I'm going to go around these pockets with archival ink in black soot and um just to give that some more dimension going around that circle that says closed until further notice uh, with that Stabilo pencil. I'm not going to activate that. I'm just going to kind of leave it sketchy. And then I did go around the whole inside as well with that archival ink. And then I'm going to tuck everything into these little pockets that I created. And that is going to be it for me. So if you liked this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And until next time, bye.